Welcome to our tutorial on creating a wall cladding assembly from an undulating triangulated surface. Our first step is to transform this mesh into a PPS, or planar poly surface, using the mesh to PPS component. It's crucial to check for any errors in the PPS conversion and ensure that all mesh normals are correctly oriented outwards. A properly prepared PPS is the foundation of our project. With our PPS ready, we turn our attention to the material characteristics. We will decide on the thickness for our wall panels and employ a negative shell component. This will thicken the faces inwards, setting the stage for our material's physical properties and the overall aesthetic of our cladding. Next up is the simplified mitered joint component. Here, we have the option to introduce a gap between the parts for visual or practical purposes. Adjust the settings to your preference. Once our joints are defined, we bring our components together in an assembly component. This unifies our previous steps, consolidating the individual elements into a cohesive structure ready for disassembly and analysis. After the assembly component has done its job, we'll connect it to the disassemble component. This might take a few seconds as it meticulously separates our design into individual elements. With each part now isolated, we can inspect and ensure everything aligns with our design goals. Let's proceed to bake our objects into Rhino and examine the results closely. We notice intersections at points where multiple triangles meet. To address this, we introduce the single trim node component, which deftly avoids these intersections with minimal cuts. Occasionally, parts may not generate correctly. To counteract this, we'll add a small tolerance gap, say 0.1 mm, around the vertices. If issues persist, adjusting the convergence criteria for the optimizer or moving the precision slider can increase the roughness of cuts. This reduces the likelihood of creating tiny, unmillable faces, ensuring our parts are practical for fabrication. Let's take our final step in this tutorial. After implementing the single trim node and ensuring our disassemble process is error-free, it's time to bake our parts once again. This crucial step lets us examine how the intersecting parts have been skillfully excised, leaving us with a clean, intersection-free design at the vertices. As we wrap up this segment of our tutorial, keep in mind that our journey into the intricacies of wall cladding with B-Bear doesn't end here. In the upcoming second part, we'll dive into crafting a robust backing system using the precision of the tongue and groove method. So stay tuned for more insights and step-by-step -step guidance.